Hey, thank you for tuning in to the uh, First Metal Church of Christ, and I just want to thank you for that. Be sure to go over to our YouTube channel and, and uh, like or share or subscribe to it, and be sure to let others know about it. We'll continue to bring you some great messages and devotionals and and uh, short uh, essays to uh, help you, encourage you, and strengthen you along the way. I'm sure a lot of you have already been listening to the news or across the social media, the, the events that are unstirring over in the Middle East. And, you know, this has been prophesied from the uh, book of Genesis many, many years ago. And uh, this is why they've been having a lot of conflict and turmoil and strife and tension between the, the Israelis and the Palestinians. You know, this is the descendants of Ishmael and Isaac. And it's always going to have that tension there. Well, let's look and see what the prophecy says about this. And uh, in Genesis 16, 12, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it says, The sons of yours will be a wild man, as untamed, as wild as a donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. And in Genesis 17, 20, as for Ishmael, I will bless him also. Just as you have asked, I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply his descendants. He will become the father of 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. Now, the conflict between Isaac and Ishmael, as mentioned in the Bible, is often seen as the root of an ongoing tension between their descendants. God promised to make great nations of both Isaac and Ishmael, as we read in Genesis seventeen twenty. And their prospective lineages have had significant historical and cultural impacts. Now, the establishment of the modern state of Israel back in 1948, or subsequently to uh, conflicts in the Middle East, have involved various Arab nations, some of which are considered descendants of Ishmael. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, in particular, has been a significant source of tension and violence in the region. Historical conflicts in the Middle East involving Ishmael's descendants cannot be simplified to a single cause. Factors such as political uh, aspirations, territorial disputes, religious differences, and power struggles have all played a role in shaping these conflicts. In Genesis 16:12, there is a prophecy concerning Ishmael, the son of Abraham and Hagar. The verse states that he shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell over against all his relatives. This prophecy provides insight into the character and future of Ishmael and his descendants. Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham, born to him through his wife Sarah's maidservant Hagar. At the time of Ishmael's birth, Sarah was barren, and she suggested that Abraham have a child to Hagar to fulfill God's promise of descendants. Ishmael's birth was a result of this arrangement. Now, the symbolism of a wild donkey, the prophecy described Ishmael as a wild donkey of a man, this imagery suggests that Ishmael and his descendants would possess a nature characterized by independence, strength, and a nomadic lifestyle. The wild donkey symbolizes freedom, self-sufficiency, and tendency to resist being tamed or controlled. The verse also states that Ishmael's hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. This indicates a constant conflict and strife. It suggests that Ishmael's descendants would face challenges and opposition from others, and they themselves would be inclined to engage in conflicts. The prophecy further reveals that Ishmael would dwell over against all his relatives. The prophecy further reveals that Ishmael would dwell over uh, all his relatives and his descendants would have a distinct and separate existence from their relatives. Uh, they would maintain a separate identity and live in territories that are distinct from their close relatives, such as the descendants of Isaac. The fulfillment of this prophecy can be seen in the historical and cultural development of the Ishmaelites or the Arab people. Throughout history, the Arab people have been known for their nomadic lifestyle, independence, and a history of conflict and tensions with the various nations and groups. Their cultural and territorial distinctiveness from the semantic people are also aligned with this prophecy. The prophecies of 16, Genesis 16, 12 speak specifically about the descendants of Ishmael and should be understood in its historical and cultural context. So now you have two boys, Isaac and Ishmael. Abraham sends Hagar and Ishmael away. 
but yet God takes care of them. Ishmael was the first son, and it's about 12 years later. Here comes Isaac. So now you have a rival between both sons. I'm sure Ishmael was feeling some jealousy and anger and resentment because he just now lost everything. This is what happens when you run ahead of God and do things your way and not wait upon God. You see, Ishmael loses everything. Right? Now think about this. He loses his birthright. He loses his inheritance. He loses his honor. He loses his father. So Ishmael becomes a teenager around his time. And, and what is that going to do to him? What would you do to teenagers? You know, they're at that age when they become rebellious and and it's the resentful and angry and jealous and things like that. So now, from Ishmael comes much of the Arab people. You have the Ishmaelites. You have ancient records from the Babylonians and from the Assyrians that link up Ishmael to the Arabs. There are records of Arab people from Muhammad before Islam comes where it says that we are the children of Ishmael. In the Quran, it says that Ishmael and Hagar came to Mecca and Ishmael died in Mecca. So what all does this show us? And what all does this tell us? God says, I will make you a great nation. God said this about 4,000 years ago. The Arab people is probably one of the most popular people in the world. Ishmael does a lot of fighting throughout his lifetime. And Islam is a fighting religion. Ishmael lost Abraham, his father. So Ishmael can't call God father. That's why on the Temple Mount it says God has no son. But from Genesis and now from the tents of Abraham, the destiny of the Arab people is linked to the Jewish people. That's why there's a link between the Arabs and the Jews. They are considered half siblings, but some will consider them cousins. But yet the ending is good because now you have Isaac and Ishmael both together burying Abraham. This is what Genesis 25, 9 and 10 says. Um, I'm going to paraphrase it here. It says that his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried Abraham in the cave where he had buried his wife Sarah. So here we have both sons burying Abraham with his wife Sarah. So now Ishmael was angry and resentful. The spirit in terrorism is resentment. So it's a resentment against the Jews because they are linked to Isaac. It's about Ishmael and Isaac and the Christians because the Christians are linked to Isaac because the Messiah came through Isaac. Remember, it went through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and on down through the line. So Ishmael was not in it because Abraham had a maidservant who gave him a son, Ishmael, and therefore couldn't receive the blessing because he was not in the Semitic line. So now you put all these factors together, you have trouble. In the tents of Abraham, you have a spirit that says, I am the outcast one. So that leads to radicalism. Then it leads to, if I can't get it this way, I am going to get it that way. I'm going to get it by the sword. I'm going to take back what is mine. Can you see and hear the resentment that, uh, that Ishmael had? It was the land of Israel. This was the inheritance of Isaac from Abraham. This is what Ishmael thought should have been his, the land of Israel. The covenant came through Isaac and the blessing. So now Ishmael decides to have his own revelation. We are going to have our own religion. We are going to take back everything and we are going to say that it all belongs to us. So this is the spirit of Ishmael. Many people have the spirit of Ishmael in them and they don't even know it. Look you know, how they act. They're bitter, they're resentful, they're angry, they're jealous. They have that spirit and they can't let it go because they don't want to let it go. If you're living in bitterness and you're living in the spirit of Ishmael, if you live your life like I am the victim, you're living in the spirit of Ishmael. If you live in a way that says, look, what I've lost, you're living in the spirit of Ishmael. If you define yourself by the way that others treat you, you're living in the spirit of Ishmael. If you live in anger, jealousy, strife, hatred, and look at them with all that money, then you are living in the spirit of Ishmael. You live in gloom and doom and live in fear, you're living in the spirit of Ishmael. If you live uh, your life in rejection, you're living in the spirit of Ishmael. 
if you're trying to make up for what happened in your life and trying to get approval or attention because you're trying to prove to yourself, you are living in the spirit of Ishmael. There's no blessings in the spirit of Ishmael. There's only a curse in it. But yet there is still hope. There is. You see, we hear the good news, and Romans 10, 13 shows us that we must hear the gospel so that we know and how to obey. We must first receive the good news through the teachings of God's word. And then we must believe. A personal belief in the gospel is essential to God's plan of salvation. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes through the word of Christ. We must believe that the one true God of the Bible sent his son Jesus from heaven has the once and for all sacrifice for the sins of the world. We must believe in Jesus' sinful life, the death on the cross, and the resurrection from the dead. This is the gospel as defined in Corinthians 15. And also Romans 10, 9 states that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many teach a confession of sins prior to the point of salvation, but however, the Bible teaches that we confess that Jesus has the master of our lives. The Christian walk requires a complete 180 turn from your life of sin to a life of righteousness. The Bible calls this act repentance. The word repentance literally means a change of mind in one or action. When a person commits his life to Christ, he turns away from their old ways and habits in order to follow his new master. And the Bible is very clear regarding the necessity and the role of water baptism and the plan of salvation. We are told to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. The water baptism signifies that we are buried into the death of Christ. Therefore, symbolically, the blood washes away our sins and we arise a new creature and walk in newness of life and be faithful even unto the end of death. So our walk with Jesus should be all the way to the end. We should live a faithful and holy life the best that we can, confessing our sins each and every day that we fall short. We're not perfect. We will make mistakes. For Christ says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins.